Hello, hello. Welcome to the MasterCard Lighthouse Grand Finale. My name is Vincent Weir. I'm one of the co-founders of the Lighthouse program. I'm also the CEO of Growth Minds, an investor at Nordic Science Capital. And with me to tell us about the Lighthouse program, what we're all about, and what we're going to find out today is none other than the professor of payments, MasterCard's one and only Mats Torlson. Mats, welcome on stage. Mats, thank you, Vincent. Mats, Lighthouse is the most committed, the longest lasting partnership program here in the Nordics and Baltics. We're the number one partnership program for startups looking yeah. to work with banks. What can you tell us more about the Lighthouse program? Why are we here? Why are we here? The team think of two things, really. That's partnership, that's what it's all about. But it's also the new Nordic ecosystem. That's where we focus our thoughts uh, a lot. Uh, we think of those separately, but I think we should step back a little bit and see what are we talking about with the Nordic, which is eight countries, the new Nordic, which is eight countries. We have a long history of collaboration. The Baltic Sea is connecting us to this side of the world, for instance. But uh, over the last 30 years, so much has happened. So much forces has been around. I mean, like uh, connecting our histories, connecting our economies, our governments, and a shared sense of security, most recently, I would say. That's right, Mats. When I woke up this morning in my nice hotel, which I'm so happy as a Swede, there's very few places in the world I can go these days with good value for money, but my amazing bed and breakfast hotel here in Tallinn made me think about the B&B &B that is connecting the Nordics and the Baltics. Of course, it's the Baltic Sea. Hmm. It's been the center of commerce and trade. I like to say that Sweden and Denmark are Baltic countries. And in fact, that's why we like this term New Nordics, because it is one geography connecting us. And of course, Latitude 59 very much speaks to that fact, right? We're all here because of our shared geographic location and our shared commitment mm -hmm. yeah. to innovation. Um, but then there's the N, which is, of course, NATO. And this is a really interesting fact for a lot of, especially Swedes and Finns. One of the things that defined the old Nordic identity was being alliance-free not getting entangled in these complicated alliances that had really been a, a, a very long history in Europe. So we're entering a new era, and that's why I think we need a new Nordics. But the last B, you have the Baltics, you got NATO, and then of course you have the banks, right? The banks are the same in these countries. And if you look at that, that's kind of an interesting trade mm -hmm. bloodline flowing through these eight beautiful countries clustered close mm -hmm. to the Baltic Sea. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here with Lighthouse Program, is because the banks want to meet amazing startups. We want to work together, and today's winners are going to, uh, that we're going to announce very soon are the companies that have shown the most promise and the most progress on connecting with these banks. That's right, that's really right. And it's, I love real time, so today you will see the winners crowned in, in real time. And the, we have um, uh, very, very competitive startups in, in this class, and you will see the top one now pitch to be the winner. It's true. One of the banks told me that this is, uh, this is now the 12th time we've run the Lighthouse program, which let's give a round of applause for that commitment to this ecosystem. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's easy to start a startup program. It is hard to be there 12 times in a row. We've had over 200 startup alumni come through this program over the years. This mm -hmm. is our fourth time in Tallinn. And I've heard one of the banks say that this is one of the strongest classes we've ever had. And I don't think it's a coincidence that for the first time on stage today, we're going to see majority women pitching. Mm -hmm. And that includes the fintech companies and also the impact companies. Looking at this, I, I see some really interesting trends. I see one of the strongest companies ever adding 800 customers in Q1. One of the companies you're going to meet has a million plus customers as a startup. That's an incredible sign in their businesses. We have. Uh, uh, as one of the founders put it yesterday, you're going to see women doing it all. And uh, I'll leave it at that. But with us to talk about some of the amazing uh, programs, we, we, we're soon going to woke up Inez on the stage. But I think we're also going to talk briefly about the bracket uh, before we do that. So we obviously, at the Lighthouse program, are a competition. Because I think the three new Nordic values that we like to hit on most here are collaboration, of course, banks and startups, but also competitiveness. Part of the reason that we are where we are as a group of countries today is because we achieve excellence. And this is one example of the competitiveness the Lighthouse program is introducing to the program. So here you see the bracket. It's a little bit like the Ice Hockey World Championships happening right now. But you have a Norwegian champion, a Danish champion, and a Baltic champion, which you will soon meet. 
And then, of course, we have our impact tech companies here on the right-hand side meeting in the program finale. You're going to see them pitch. We're going to pick the winner. And with us to talk about our Finitech program, Finitive, is my colleague Inez. Inez, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vincent. Isn't it crazy that we are already back in Tallinn? We started the program back in 2018, and now we are already celebrating the six-year anniversary of the Lighthouse program. I don't think when we started, well, we definitely didn't use the term New Nordics back then, and that's what was so cool yesterday, to hear the mayor of Tallinn come on our stage and say, Estonia is a Nordic country and an Eastern European country. Both things can be true at the same time, but it's great to be here. Yeah, exactly. And with closing this program, we will grow our alumni community to over 180 companies, which is amazing. And I know the Lighthouse platform has been a great support for the new Nordics um, uh, as a, to support the financial services ecosystem. But uh, picking a winner is not an easy task out of all these great companies that you already referred to. Have you seen any patterns as you looked at the companies this time around? It's interesting for our audience. We see basically all the fintechs in the region. What have you noticed? Well, this time around, it was a lot focused around digital payment solutions, uh, but there is a strong push towards data-driven insights and efficiency, evidenced by offerings such as AI-powered platforms for consumer receipt analysis and streamlined lending management systems. And compliance technology also features prominently with solutions aimed at KYC verification and anti-money laundering. And uh, when it comes to the 15 selected into the spring program, it was quite a diverse batch. So we could see like all kind of solutions. When you talk about AI, because it's of course a very trendy topic these days, I think folks are expecting the amazement factor that we saw with the LLMs and especially with ChatGPT. But what we're seeing more on the FinTech side is more automation and augmentation, which I think is actually the more sustained trends that have been happening, of course, for over a decade now. Is that what you're seeing as well? Exactly, exactly. And I think now it is time to hear a bit about our amazing startups who are here with us today. So first on stage, it will be a KYC solution combining best-in-class software that collects KYC, responds to bank KYC, manages legal entity data and more with offerings for managed services and advisory services. So I would like to welcome up on stage uh, the Denmark class winner, Anders and Martin from Avalon. <laughs> Big round of applause. It needs to be on. All right. So uh, I'm going to start over. Is that okay? Okay. Good to be back here in, uh, in, in Estonia, but also a very special, uh, special experience. The last time I was here, I was firefighting the largest money laundering scandal ever recorded globally in my role as head of compliance. The scandal had massive consequences for Estonia, uh, for Denmark, for the bank, but also for me personally. I learned a lot, and one of the things was uh, how hard it is to get high-quality know-your-customer data, especially in more complex environments. Martin has been building enterprise software his entire life, and he's seen firsthand how technology can help our customers solve pretty complex problems. We started Avalon uh, to increase transparency and fight one of the biggest problems the world has right now, which is financial crime. Each year, trillions of dollars are money laundered. Uh, it's not so much the money laundering that's the problem, it's the underlying crime. And the underlying crimes, that's the worst of the worst. It's human trafficking, often of women and children. It's drug trafficking, illegal arms trading. Um, it's organized crime in general. On top of that comes the terrorist financing that supports more than 7,000 attacks that happen every year around the globe. Uh, not to mention tax evasion, bribery corruption, and sanctions breaches. So you're actually fighting all those evils when you're working with KYC. So what is Avalon? We're a uh, Copenhagen-based uh, SaaS startup. We help our customers collect KYC and respond to KYC requests. And our customers, they are funds, corporates, and NGOs. 
We only deal with complex and often high-risk KYC, not consumer KYC. Avalon has the best team to solve this massive challenge. Anas and I are surrounded by an amazing team, and we're backed by strong investors. But what we're the most proud of is the customers that have trusted us with their business, and they include some of the world's largest corporates, funds, and NGOs. Avalon's vision is to become the enterprise KYC exchange. Today, KYC is a total mess of data and documents flying back and forth, and the burden is only going up. Complexity increases, and everyone is requesting information from each other. It's not just the banks, it's also law firms, accountants, suppliers, investors, uh, and customers. And this is further fueled by the geopolitical situation. The risk of non-compliance is higher than ever, especially related to sanctions breaches. And Avalon is uniquely positioned to become the enterprise KYC exchange. We have customers using the platform to respond to KYC, to collect KYC, and some are doing both. And we're the only platform that can solve both of these problems. So as the numbers go up, we become the place where enterprises share KYC data and documents in a secure and automated way. Martin and I, we get up every morning uh, to help our customers up their KYC game and fight financial crime. And we're here today looking for funds, NGOs, and corporates as uh, customers, and financial institutions and technology providers as partners. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Avalon. And as Vincent promised, now we are moving on to hearing from some uh, female founders. Next up on stage will be our Baltic class winner, an Estonian AI-driven business verification and anti-money laundering compliance platform. The woman who can do it all, I would like to welcome on the stage Julia from Vespia. Hello, hello. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julia, founder and CEO of Vespia. Vespia is an anti-money laundering platform that helps your business comply with the regulatory obligations. Consider this. Trillions of dollars are laundered every year. Uh, banks, fintechs, crypto companies are pouring nearly a quarter trillion every year on slow and manual AML processes, tools, huge departments of people. Now, how sad it is that you can invest so much into AML and still get fined for billions of dollars. Well, this is where Vespia comes in. Vespia is an all-in-one platform that can verify any company, person, transaction in a matter of seconds. Uh, our system combines uh, data from thousands of sources. We analyze the data for you. We monitor your customers. And uh, you can receive an alert if any of your processes need to be updated. Our secret weapon is Julia AI, your trusty compliance assistant. Yes, this is basically me as a robot. So our customers were constantly making this joke that, Julia, you should automate yourself. So we did, made me into an AI. Julia AI um, can help you understand the context of the data, highlight any risks, and just tell you if you need to drop one of your customers because they're not good. So traditional AML methods can consume as much as 10% of your revenue. With Vespia, that number drops to a mere half a percent. Unlike our competitors who focus on niche areas of AML or our data resellers, with Vespia, you can achieve full AML autopilot with just one click. Uh, our customers come from Europe, Asia, Canada, and these are both fintechs, uh, crypto banks, but also accounting, cloud firms, investment funds. And with some of our customers, we're soon launching in Africa and uh, South America, so keep an eye on that. Vespia is a team of 10 people. Uh, we have both startup as well as traditional finance backgrounds. I have been doing RecTech for over eight years, including a few years in the KYC Unicorn Verif. And my co-founder, Anton, has been a CTO for over 20 years, uh, worked for NASA and Google projects. So far, we have raised under 1 million and are now finalizing our 2 million seed round. More than half is committed. This will propel us to become the standard of AML. Uh, Co-leads and followers are super welcome. Any businesses out here, if you need help with uh, AML, uh, size, sector, budget, doesn't matter, we're here for you. And investors, act fast, because the round is closing in June. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. 
And now we arrive to our last overall winner nominee, coming all the way from Norway. It is a B2B software company delivering true digital receipt data and universal payment keys with a transaction-based revenue and licensing. I would like to welcome up on stage Gillian from Receipts. Hi. I'm guessing that you, like me, are frustrated when you sit down to do your travel expenses. Some receipts are on paper, some in your email, some on different apps, and, and some with no receipts at all. The situation is highly fragmented with unformatted and unstructured e-receipts that are difficult to share. It's good to get receipts as a PDF in an app or an email, but how many app silos should we have? I've got good news for you. Receipts, we've solved this. I can now get all my receipts in one place, automatically in the bank. Anybody else who wants this, hands up. Great. Good news, you're not alone. Our beta tests show that 96% of consumers want receipts in the bank. Banks are trusted, making them a perfect match for handling consumer consent. On the consumer's behalf, we match receipts with payment transactions and store them in the bank. We're just simplifying everyday life. We connect banks, consumers, and merchants in an ecosystem. While banks, schemes, and cashier systems make distribution of digital receipts possible, buyers, like corporates, pay for digital receipts they, that they don't have to manually interpret. We are propelling the ecosystem by sharing revenue with our enabling partners. Although there, there have been several attempts to solve this, nobody has managed to do it properly so far, get that, that magic X factor. Our peers are dependent on things like tokenization, on terminal integration, one-to-one -one onboarding of merchants. Whereas receipts is a pure B2B solution integrated with banks, schemes, cashier systems. We're engineered for mass deployment, global reach, and um, patent pending. So our solution is universal, and um, as I said, patent pending. We're a very strong team, international team, proven track record from banking, cashier systems, payments, retail, and scaling. Right now, we're proven in Norway. We're alive in, in beta testing, ramping up for OBOS, uh, a reward uh, program with 600,000 members. We're working with Eurocard. And by summer, our market coverage will be 50%, thanks to innovation contracts with DMB, other Norwegian banks, and cashier systems. Next is go live in Sweden and Denmark. And later, it's all about lightning scaling in Europe and beyond. To wrap it up, our solution is universal with global reach and it's patent pending. Consumers want it, buyers are eager to get it. Solutions already in use and we're sharing revenue with our enabling partners. So the question is, who's on board to scale receipts? You know where to find us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gillian. Actually, uh, I have to admit that we are leaving you with quite a cliffhanger now as we are not announcing the definitive overall winner just yet. Right, Vincent? That's right. Up next is Impact. And I think of the Nordics as a fintech powerhouse for sure. I actually moved here to work at one of these really big famous fintech companies that we have in the new Nordics. But what's really special about this part of the world, I think if you zoom out and look at the entire world, is the commitment to doing well by doing good. Right? And this is the twin engines that power this entire startup ecosystem. And that's why, after working with great companies like Duconomy, MasterCard decided in 2020 to launch an entirely dedicated track to impact. Impact can mean a lot of things, and we're going to see some great examples. Over the years, we've worked with a number of companies, from companies like Duconomy, which are automating 
the financial transactions and helping consumers understand the carbon footprint of their spending to companies like Molecular Attraction, which is focused on mosquitoes and helping the world become a more prosperous and secure place. So it can mean a lot of different things for us, but here to talk to us more about the companies in this class is my colleague, Marie Louise, who will be telling us a little bit more about Massive. Well, thank you, Vincent. Well, I'd like to immediately introduce uh, our first company. So our first presenting company enables African MSMEs to centralize all their business transactions in one place and access trade finance solutions through their bookkeeping app. Please join us on stage, Morgan from Ledger. So hi everyone, my name is Morgan. I'm one of the co-founder of Ledger, the ultimate finance application for macro businesses in Africa. So 80% of the African economy is driven by macro businesses. And even though they are the backbone of the economy, they are still totally excluded from the formal financial system. I would like to introduce you to Judy. So Judy is a fish trader in Nairobi. She's been running her business in the past 10 years, and her entire family um, is relying on her activity. So before, Judy didn't have access to any kind of business tool available in the market, because they usually require us to have a bank account, a computer, or just a formal proof of registration. So, and this was extremely costly for her. Not only she was paying $40 a month just on transaction fees, but because she didn't have any clear financial history, she couldn't get any financial support from banks. So her only option was to get a $20 loans at 40% monthly interest rate. And that's why we built Leja. Leja is the first business hub truly tailored for micro businesses in Africa. So we allow them to consolidate and manage all their business transactions in one place. They can record their sales, expenses, liabilities, um, they can also pay and receive payment at cheaper cost, and then access um, affordable lending solutions provided by our financial partners. Because by consolidating all those business data, what we do is like we build a very strong credit score engine that now allow banks for the first time to de-risk and access and access this massive untapped market, and then deploy capital at lower cost. And um, Leja changed Judith's life. Not only she can save up to 90% on her transaction fees, but just after three months of using our application, she was able to get a $200 working capital loan, three times cheaper than anything else in the market. She also saw her revenue grow by 50% on a month to month basis, and now she's never been late again to pay the school fees of her kids. So we launched Leja in 2021 in Kenya. And today we already have 1.5 million businesses in our platform. It's $6 billion of payment process on an annual basis. And thanks to two key financial partners, we were able to deploy $3 million of loans with only 3% default rate. So behind Leja, it's a team of more than 50 people and well-known partners all committed to the mission of bridging the 500 billion credit gap existing across the African continent. So if you're um, an investor interested in our business, our financial partners looking at supporting more duties, uh, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Morgan and Ledger. So up next on stage, we have a company on a mission to improve kids' physical and mental health um, by combining gaming with physical exercise. Please join us on stage, Olof from Fused. Hello, everyone. My name is Olof. Uh, I've been a gamer for the last 30 years, and growing up, I was considered sort of an outsider because of this. Now, together with me, I have three billion fellow gamers. It's the biggest leisure interest in the world as of now, 
But this also means that we have kids spending more than 10 hours a day in front of screens. So it's safe to say that the games have changed, really. What used to be a physical playground is now a digital one, where we have massive companies, influencers, and brands all trying to reach our kids' attention with unhealthy products and lifestyles. So, and kids are playing here more now than ever, and adding social media into this mix, we get a cocktail that is a, basically a mental and physical health problem soaring in the young generation. And the question is, what can we do about this? We believe that we can flip the coin and turn gaming and screen time into a catalyst for better health. And we do that in a concept that we call full body gaming. And the way this works is that our players, they earn screen time through first being physically active or completing healthy tasks. We create also a gamification platform, uh, so rewarding participation and, re and rewarding good behavior. Uh, and last of all, we want to make it free of charge for everybody so we can have maximum impact. And we turned this into a product using two main components. The first one being our app. It's the gamification program that is rewarding our players with both screen time and also um, rewards from our partners. It's a two billion dollars, sorry, two billion children sort of market where we have so many kids spending time on the phones with, along with their four billion parents. 80% of kids don't meet the one hour of moderate intensity training, which is the recommended levels of WHO. And moderate intensity training is equal to walking to the bus. So this is a huge problem. And this we want to scale globally as a parental control tool, um, controlling screen time in every home fa and family globally. But we also work on a local scale. So we build spaces that we call clubhouses together with cities and municipalities where we connect gaming and physical exercise under one roof. So this is pictures from our facility in Helsingborg. It's a three and a half thousand square meter facility. Um, combining gaming and sports under one roof, we have basketball, football, uh, high intensity training, but also of course gaming. Um, and we, we reach six to eight times more people than the usual community center. And here the application is a marketing tool, a, a window to the community for our municipalities that we have as partners. So we sell this on a product as a service franchise model to cities. 65% of our customers or members, they come from marginalized areas of society. And these are the kind of kids that are very, um, that run a high risk of ending up in gang criminalities and those kind of things. So a very hard target group for the municipalities to reach. So we're on a mission to try to change the whole gaming and screen time industry into something good. And if you think that this is a good idea, please reach out to us. Hello at Fuse.com. I'm going to be around here also in the MasterCard booth. Um, so please connect. We're here to uh, partner up in new markets and uh, scale our concept outside of Sweden. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olof and Fust. So now we're up to hear our final massive finalist. So we have a company that provides a deposit system that offers reusable packing, packaging in one revolving loan system to eliminate the need for single-use plastic. Welcome up on stage, Clara from Pante. Thank you. So, we use two billion single-use containers only in Sweden each year. And this is crap. My name is Clara. I'm an environmental lawyer, former advisor to the Minister for the Environment and the CEO of Panther. Today, I will tell you a secret. There's going to be a reuse revolution. Disposable packaging leads to both litter and climate emissions, since less than 10% is being recycled and the rest incinerated. But right now, governments all over the globe are implementing regulation, taxes and bans on disposables. Since the 1st of January in Sweden, restaurants and cafes must offer their guests reusable packaging included in a return system. And this legislation will enter into force in all EU member states within two years. The solution? 
Panther, the digital return system for reusable packaging. We bring compliance and convenience as a service. We create cleaner cities and cut emissions for our customers. For the user, it's like a library. You borrow a cup for free and you pay only if you fail to return. Last year, we partnered up with Tingstad, the biggest wholesaler for takeaway packaging in Sweden. They have the muscles and we have the speed and together we aim for 90% market share within the Nordics. Having brought together all the major players on the market, we discovered they have one common desire. They want to join the same system. We are that system. And this year, we've unleashed Panther on 800 new customers, including all espresso houses and IKEAs. But we are just getting started. Our growth ahead is fueled by additional partnerships, creating a strong and sticky infrastructure in the Nordics. Panther is the thought-leading tech company, accelerating the rise of reusables. Join us if you're ready for a reuse revolution. Thank you so much. So thank you very much, Clara and Pante. So now is the moment we have been waiting for. We have been working three months in workshop, hard stuff. But now it's the moment. Uh, we, we have five criteria that we are looking for when we uh, appoint the winner. It's uh, partnership readiness, of course, program progress, accountability score, and uh, something we call the North Star score. And, and that's uh, a score when we look at the company, how inspiring it could be for everyone around them. So th these are the criteria we're looking at. And this company proved to fulfill all of the criteria. And no further ado, I think we used to say, show us the winner. Congratulations, Morgan. Congratulations, Morgan <laughs> and Ledja. How are you doing? How does it feel? Good. I mean, it's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, it's not only me. We are a big team behind Ledja. Um, it's, it was a very long and it's still a very long journey. And we are so dedicated to um, change the narrative around micro businesses in the continent. and. Um, yeah, now this recognition means that we are doing something good. So thank you for that. Thank you. Great. That was really good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for, forgot the food, huh? All right. I, I love that notion of the North Star score, it's something that inspires the rest of the ecosystem. And it's really interesting to be in the Nordics as an American, thinking about this commitment that we have to not just making high profits, but working according to even higher principles. It's been a real pleasure to work with companies that are driven by profit and purpose in the Massive program. I do think founders here are starting to ask themselves, how can we do business better? And it's a really interesting question for a founder, because founders in particular can be super selfish, right? Only obsessed with our problem, thinking about our interests. We have maximum 
equity to be uh, appreciated by our team, for example. So I'm really excited by this movement happening within Massive and within this program. Thank you all to those founders. And next, we have our FinTech program. And to announce the winners, Inez, please join me back. Or Caroline, <laughs> both of you. <laughs> Thanks, Vincent. Thank you. So this has been really one of the best Finitive classes we had so far, and it was super hard to, to choose a winner. And I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of the companies who've been part of the program, not only the finalists, but all of you. Big round of applause to all of you. <laughs> and I think now it's time to read the motivation, Caroline. Yes, indeed. It wasn't an easy decision. It's been a great spring, great cohort meeting with 20 amazing companies, 15 in the Finitive class. It hasn't been an easy decision, but we have com come to a joint decision together with our program partners and advisors. And I will read the motivation, so I need my glasses. Um, the company who is awarded the overall winner uh, has been uh, an, um, awarded due to their professionalism and partnership readiness. And they demonstrate this towards all program partners. Their product and their approach has gained huge interest from the partner banks. The team behind the solution truly has a great potential to achieve success in the upcoming years. So with no further ado, the Finitive Spring program winner is Congratulations, Avalon! Congratulations. Please join us on stage. Woo! Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. And the awards. <laughs> Basket as well. Yeah. So, how does it feel? It uh, feels amazing uh, and also uh, very appreciative of the program in the last three months. Uh, and I think as uh, Simon mentioned yesterday, there's many conflicting things you need to do as a founder. Uh, but this was really, really worth it, uh, especially today, but even if you wouldn't be here on stage, uh, you know. So, uh, no, very, very much appreciative. It's been great having you on the program. Any word from you? Yeah, look forward to bringing this home to the team. It's, uh, it's amazing. Thank you. You're heavy on the flight home. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> Big congratulations again. Well, I know you're allowed to carry a pillow with you on the plane. I sure hope you're allowed to carry a gigantic trophy. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure with you this afternoon. We are nearing the end of the MasterCard Lighthouse Startup Showcase. Just want to make one quick point about this startup ecosystem that is connecting the new Nordics. If you think about it, it's a really important strand of our shared DNA. And if you go all the way back to the first unicorn ever in Europe, Skype, it was founded by a Dane, a Swede, and five Estonians right here in Tallinn. It's amazing to be back here thinking about the startup ecosystem and how we can continue to inspire the rest of the world and the rest of our continent. Uh, and of course, we have a, another wave that is very similar to that first one where Skype rose out of the ashes of the first dot-com crash and created an example for the rest of us in Europe. We are facing very similar conditions today as we exit what was kind of a tech crash a few years ago. I really hope that is an inspiring idea to several of the founders here. These are the most fertile grounds we will see for startups in a long time. Before we go, I do want to bring our attention back here. Congratulations to our program winners. And thank you so much to the partners that make this Lighthouse program possible. Of course, it's our banks, Swedbank, SEB, OP Bank, DNB, Danske Bank, we could not do this without you guys. Of course, MasterCard is the host. Uh, thank you to our program partners. That is uh, all the great companies that you see here. And thank you to our community partners, uh, without which we would not be able to bring such great startups to the stage year after year. On that note, I'd like to say thank you again and invite all of the new Nordic startups in the audience to apply to our program. It is opening today. And you can apply right now. Our full applications will focus on Sweden and Finland and the Baltics, uh, but uh, we will be in slush next time you see us. And of course, we hope to be back here next year. 
I can't think of any other note to end on. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.